Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Celine. If you're new here, um, I haven't filmed or talked about books on the internet for a very, very long time, and I'm a little bit rusty, and I get a little embarrassed about <laughs> posting these videos, but at the end of the day, I do like talking about books, and I think I just have too many things to say, and I need to get them off my chest. So <laughs> I'm going to film anyway, and um, I was like so th like grateful and surprised, but a lot of people have been messaging me, asking me like when I'm gonna upload my next video. So thank you. Um, yeah, I'm I'm glad that some at least some people are uh, getting something out of. Um, these videos, but yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about my favorite books of 2022. I only filmed wrap-ups uh, until about, I think, the month of April or May. I didn't get to film for the rest of the year. Um, I was going to do like one long video of the rest of the books that I read in the year, but it would just be too long, I think. And some of the books are just not worth talking about, I think. So I thought it would be better to do just the 2022 wrap up. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'm just gonna get straight into it. So I'm just gonna go in chronological order. I have my notebook here and some of the books I don't have physically with me, but I'll try to put them up, put them up on screen uh, somewhere. But yeah, I started off the year really strong with Milkman by Anna Burns. I absolutely loved this book. It was the first book I read by Anna Burns and I really wanna read her other books now. Um, but this is her most famous book because I think it won the Man Booker Prize, um, or at least it was shortlisted. Uh, if I had it with me, I could have confirmed that, but I'm pretty sure it won the Man Booker. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a more experimental take on um, a story of political, political oppression, occupation, um, and patriarchy in Northern Ireland. Um, it's not explicitly set in Northern Ireland, but you can kind of infer from the context clues. And the narrator is unnamed, and it's narrated from her point of view. And she kind of uses these ambiguous terms to describe her surroundings. Um, so it's not like you're very, it's not like a straightforward historical fiction novel by any means. But I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of a tough read because it can be kind of taxing and repetitive and also um, just a bit mind-numbing because you're just constantly in the head of the narrator and these kind of very traumatic events are happening to her repeatedly um, as she kind of goes about her life. And um, But all that being said, I thought that it tackled issues of like political occupation, um, patriarchy, and misogyny really, really well. And it was structured really well and it's just it was super like ethnographic um i hope that's not like a pretentious thing to say but like it felt like, really rich like full of details and so many small details that you wouldn't think of um which describe life under again like a, a basically a colonial occupation a military occupation as well as kind of like how suffocating it can be to live as a woman um, and experience political violence. Like there are so many details about that all like thrown in there um, and you really get it firsthand because again, you're in the head of the narrator. So I thought it was amazing and I want to make myself reread it. It's a bit difficult to read. Like I said, like it can be, um, it's a bit of a tiring read. It's not like light entertainment by any means, but I think it's worth it. After that, I read um, Either Or by Edith Bottomon, which is the sequel to The Idiot. I I don't have that much to say about this book because I just really like Edith Bottomon's writing. I really like the, the protagonist, Sidin, who has the same name as me. And I really, I really enjoyed The Idiot. So Either Or was just pretty much more of the same uh, because, you know, Selin is such a distinctive char uh, character and narrator. But this time around, she's kind of exploring new themes and she's a in a different part of her kind of coming of age uh, trajectory. But yeah, I just loved it. More of the same of The Idiot. Um, and it's my kind of thing. I don't think these books are for everybody, but if you if you enjoyed The Idiot, you will definitely like either or. So I definitely recommend it. And then I read one of the best books I've probably ever read. It might become an all-time favorite, but it's Insurrecto by Gina Apostol. Um, 
Yeah, I think I already talked about this book and it's very difficult to, to describe um, and to do it justice because it's such an like an intelligent, amazing book. But um, yeah, it's basically kind of like a meta narrative, narrative and it follows, oh God, I don't even know how to describe it, but it follows a translator um, who is from the Philippines, but she's been living in the US, but she comes back to the Philippines and her name is Magsalen, and which uh, I think also means translator in Tagalog. And she is helping out this other woman who is not Filipino, but she's coming to the Philippines to make a movie about her dad, who was also a filmmaker in the Philippines. So there's kind of two narratives going on that follow the translator and the actress slash filmmaker as well as the film that that actress's father made. And there's multiple screenplays interwoven um, in the book as well. And the book basically works through all of these interesting themes and ideas of um, post-colonial landscapes and the camera and film and what it means to yeah, what what that means? <laughs> there's there's just so many ideas here. Like I I really, I mean I'm not really the most informed person to talk about it, but it would I think it would require like a whole other video to really do it justice. But I will also say that the book has a website associated with it, so you can go and see like additional materials because there's so many different like historical and cultural references that are also interwoven throughout the book. So you can get all of that really important context online, and it just reading it just made me want to read anything everything that uh gina apostle has ever written and put out there and yeah it's just it's an amazing amazing book it's so well done and more people should know about it i mean i've been seeing it i saw it in barnes and noble so i think it's starting to get a little bit more popular but um i hadn't heard of it when i found it i i only got it because uh it was a Fitzcarraldo book and i saw it in the uk and i was like ooh, sounds interesting but yeah, it's an amazing, amazing book. Um, and then I'll quickly say I read uh, In the Presence of Absence by Mahmoud Darwish. No explanation needed. Um, probably, like, I think I enjoyed it a little bit more than, um, oh my god, his other one that I read last year, A River, A River something. I forgot, I'm so sorry. But anyway, it, it was amazing which you didn't didn't need me to tell you. So that was probably the best poetry I read all year. In addition to um, Let Us Believe in the Beginning of the Cold Season by Faru Farouzad, who was an Iranian woman poet. And um, yeah, this and the Darwish were definitely the best poetry collections I read all year. And I would highly, highly recommend this. Um, I posted a bunch of excerpts that I really enjoyed from this on my Instagram. So um, yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, but yeah, uh, this collection was really beautiful, really amazing. Um, those are the only two poetry books that I want to highlight. Um, two, well not two, just one more contemporary book that I really liked this year was uh, Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Au, which was pretty popular. It's a short little novella and I've already talked about it in a wrap up so I'm not going to talk for too long about it but I would just say I thought it was amazing. I love the author's style. Um, I love how pared back and simple and, well, seemingly simple uh, the writing was. And I love mother-daughter books. I love like very psychological books that unpack um, personal relationships. And I also loved the travel writing and all the nature writing in it. So it was just like a perfect storm. Uh, yeah, I really recommend that one to anybody. And then getting into the books that I didn't really talk about that much, um, my one of my other favorites of the year was White Masks by Elias Khoury, which is an Archipelago Editions book that I randomly found in a used bookstore, so that was really amazing. But I'd heard of Elias Khoury before. Um, he's a Lebanese writer, and he has a lot of um, he has a lot of books out, and um, he's yeah I don't know if he's still publishing, but he's definitely I think he's definitely um, well-known in kind of like Middle East literature circles, but White Masks, I uh, hadn't heard of it before, but it basically follows, um, it's kind of like an adaptation of a real life event that happened, um, which was like a murder that took place um, 
during towards the end of the Lebanese Civil War. So the book uh, is kind of based on this a real life story of this murder that takes place. Um, and it therefore follows the family members of the man who was murdered as well as other people who are kind of surrounding uh, this event. So because of that, it basically talks about a bunch of different perspectives of different members of Lebanese society uh, during the Civil War and immediately after it. So yeah, I, I was really surprised by how much I liked this one only because I thought that it would be, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect and I thought that maybe it would be very kind of traumatic and taxing to read, which it definitely deals with a very, um, very heavy topic and, you know, that's not a criticism, that's, that's the way it is, like, you can't really call it out for, like, milking the traumatic content or anything because it's just talking about a reality that really occurred but I was really surprised by how like empathetic the writing was and you really get into the heads of all these different characters and yes not all I mean not all the characters are great people they're actually pretty terrible people but and some of them have done very terrible things but I I really liked Corey's writing and I really really liked how I don't know he was just able to like kind of weave this tale and also have something very empathetic, like something very much in the heads of the narrators and you can kind of get a sense of like where they are in life and why they're doing what they're doing and how the war impacted them. And I think it's supposed to represent like different factions of Lebanese society. I want to read a little bit more about this book if I can, if I can find some materials, I'd be interested to hear like how people, um, how people from Lebanon have actually interpreted this book. Um, just because I know from my experience, like with Turkish literature, you know, there's, I've read quite a few Turkish books like this as well that are popular maybe in the West or like well received by Western audiences. And they're trying to say very particular political things about Turkey and talk about different members of political society um, or Turkish society. And, you know, sometimes when you're, a little bit better acquainted with the context you can kind of see like oh that's a little bit stereotypical or that's not maybe the best um depiction so yeah obviously i don't have that kind of in-depth knowledge about lebanese society but i would be interested to read more about uh, how the book has been received but yeah it definitely uh, confirmed to me that i really want to read more of elias Corey, and um i think yeah, he would be worth it to read. Though his other books are really long, um, but I think I really want to read Gate of the Sun, I think it's called. So that's going to be on my list. And then I... Hmm, oh, okay, I'll talk about <laughs> another really long book that I read, which was Vasily Grossman's Life and Fate. I read both Stalingrad, which is the prequel to Life and Fate, as well as Life and Fate itself. And I'm really proud of myself for doing it. It was a major goal that I kind of checked off my list this year. It took me um, not as long as I thought, but still a long time. And yeah, I, I, I'm I choosing Life and Fate specifically for my year end favorite list because um, I didn't think Stalingrad, Stalingrad, Stalingrad was a bad book, but I think that unless you're like a super fan and really interested in Russian literature and really interested in Vasily Grossman's life, I don't think that you need to read Stalingrad. Um, not to say that you shouldn't read a book because it's not like immediately useful or anything, but just in terms of like, if people are thinking like, oh, I need, I need to have read Stalingrad before reading Life and Fate or to really understand Life and Fate, I don't think that's the case. And I think Life and Fate is, I, in my opinion, Life and Fate is definitely the better book it's more cohesive, it's more, yeah, like emotionally grounded, um, the characters are better fleshed out, and there's a better balance of like war discussions and philosophical discussions and character development and everything is kind of like much more neatly packaged than Stalingrad because Stalingrad also went through a bunch of different drafts because uh, Grossman was working with the Soviet censors and Stalingrad also has a lot more descriptions of battles <laughs> than Life and Fate, which is something that I don't personally look for 
but if you really enjoy that maybe you would actually prefer Stalingrad um but yeah I I love Life and Fate I love I love Stalingrad too I love following the characters um the kind of central family and I will say you definitely get more um a better background of the central family that the narrative focuses on in the beginning of Stalingrad so if you really if you really connect with the characters of Life and Fate and you and you want to get that prequel um context then i think it's worth it to to read at least the beginning like first 300 pages or so of stalingrad because it sets up the the main characters of life and fate really well so there is some context that is missing in life and fate but i don't think it detracts from your overall enjoyment understanding of the book at all it's just kind of more information um but yeah for me in a nutshell life and fate was and reading stalingrad was really valuable because um I just I didn't know that it was so personal to Vasily Grossman um, because his own mm, his own mother was um, basically murdered in Ukraine um, by the Nazis and then that is also something that happens to the main character of Life and Fate in Stalingrad um, Victor Strum I think yeah Victor Strum I hope I didn't forget but his name is definitely Victor and that character is kind of based on Vasily Grossman himself. So by writing this character, Grossman kind of processes his own trauma and mourning and grief of losing his mom. So in that particular way to um, to fascism. So yeah, it's really heavy and it's it's really shocking that he was able to get this book out there. And I'm I'm really happy that it's out there. Um, but yeah, it's definitely definitely worth the read, and it's definitely a classic and. Um, yeah, I think now I have to read War and Peace, <laughs> which, uh, because I didn't realize, but um, Grossman, this is kind of like Grossman's take on War and Peace, almost. Not that it's like a direct adaptation or anything, but um, Grossman um, really liked Tolstoy, and this was kind of thought of as like a more modern War and Peace about like Russia and World War II. I don't know, but something to think about. Um, and then the rest of my favorites, um, I have two Clarice Lispector books, and then one Jane Austen, and then one new favorite and new favorite author. So really quickly, I'll talk about Clarice Lispector, though I've already talked about her a lot. But I did ultimately choose um, these two books that I read by her, which were the only two books I read by her this, this past year. Um, but I think that they both are definitely um, in my 2022 favorites. So I already talked about this book, but it's a, an apprenticeship. Oh, it's glaring. Or the Book of Pleasures. Um, I can never say this full name. Um, but then I also read uh, this past summer, uh, Near to the Wild Heart, which is, this is the first thing that she ever wrote. Um, and then this is kind of like in the middle of her, of her books. Um, but yeah, I, again, I already talked about an apprenticeship. Uh, it was a controversial favorite for me, but it's definitely still at a five-star rating. I loved it. The quotes in it, the imagery in it has definitely stuck with me. And it was just my introduction to Clarice's writing and connecting with her writing. I'm going to call her Clarice now because we're on a first name basis. <laughs> I really love her. She's become one of my favorite authors and I've only read two of her books. So yeah, um, I think that says a lot. Um, but yeah, and then Near to the Wild Heart again it was just amazing like it was so good um near the wild heart is probably the better book uh between these two it's probably better than an apprenticeship um just because i think it's a little bit more um hmm, i think there's a little bit more nuance to the themes in here and it's basically just about um a marriage and a separation whereas this is about like one growing relationship so it's actually interesting to contrast them to, or to compare them because they're both about a relationship but um i think this one because it has a little bit more content about um the main protagonist's uh, childhood and kind of like flashbacks to her childhood um i think that there's a little bit more going on in this one again really interesting kind of like naturey themes um that's kind of what i've been pick picking up on a lot um when i read Clarice now. Um, the sea was a really big kind of motif throughout this book, like water, cleansing, um, like diving underwater. 
the tumultuous sea um i don't know lots of good stuff it's really hard to like unpack what's going on in these books because again like it's not a very linear plot um there's a lot of like flashbacks maybe hallucinations that go in and out and again at the end of the day it's not really about the plot so it's kind of hard to describe it but i would just say i recommend everyone go and check out Clarice and I think her writing is amazing and yeah I just I think I have just a very emotional connection to her now which is kind of embarrassing to admit so I don't really know what to say about these books besides they're amazing and they made me emotional and I oh I just want to reread them like I just want to drop everything and reread them but I'll be reading a lot of Clarice in 2023 so I'm very excited I'm gonna go in order through her books so I have the Chandelier, uh, which is coming up next, I think, which is what she wrote after this one. So I'm gonna get on that. Um, oh, and I also have been reading her complete uh, short stories. Um, oh, okay, really quickly, I will say I also read another Jane Austen this year, which is Persuasion. And yeah, I'm sorry to say it. I really like Jane Austen. I think she's amazing. I think she's so clever. Um, she writes the kind of books that I like. I just really like, like, very, you know, psychological books. Um, she makes, you know, she has a lot of like social commentary in here. She has a lot of commentary about people and relationships in general. She also has like some humor, which I love. So it's just like, what's what's not to love? Like everything is in here. And I love Persuasion. I hadn't read it before. I've all, I had only ever watched um, like the film adaptation of it. I loved this one. Um, it might be my new favorite Austin. Sense and Sensibility is my previous favorite but I because I really liked the nature writing in here surprise surprise and the kind of like settings and how the settings mirror like the interiority of the characters can't say that word um I really liked like the city of Bath and how it's used and it was a very like I read it in autumn it was a very like autumnal book which I loved and I don't know and this one just has, has more like yearning and like like just like repressed emotions and it I think kind of like bubbles under the surface and it's done really well um so it's kind of just like in a league of its own um but yeah but I'll have to reread like Pride and Prejudice and see like if I can if I see like some of the same like stylistic elements in there but I feel like this is the first Austin I've read where I've really seen like how like nature and landscape and all that stuff kind of factors in but but I'm not an expert and I haven't I've only read three of her books so I need to get on to the rest of her books but yeah Persuasion was definitely a favorite um I have already talked about this before too so I'll just keep it quick but of course I read another Natalia Ginsburg another one of my all-time favorite authors this was Voices in the Evening five stars amazing probably my new favorite Ginsburg along with her story slash novella uh family but yeah this is amazing it's about a small italian town after world war ii and about kind of lost everyday people who are coping with the trauma of war once again drama of war the emptiness that comes after having lived through such an event how their relationships have you know changed and been you know forever altered by living through this event together and what it means to keep going after such an event and how do you you know how do you keep living your life after you've lived through such a thing um it's yeah it's very it's kind of nostalgic it's kind of dreary um but it's also a little bit hopeful it's Natalia Ginsburg you can't go wrong she's amazing Everyone should read it. Um, I wish that this cover was a little bit nicer, but that's okay. <laughs> the book is amazing. Um, but yeah, and I'm gonna be reading a lot more Ginsburg in 2023. Okay, finally, <laughs> the last book that I um, loved this year was also by a new author who I've never read before. She's a ha She was a Haitian author. Um, it's uh, Love, Anger, and Madness by Marie Vieux uh, Chauvet. Sorry if I said that wrong. Marie Vieux Chauvet. There we go. Marie Vieux Chauvet. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't speak French. Um, but yeah, so this is actually three novellas in one. And you can read them separately. Um, I just sat down and read them all in one go, though. Um, I will say I... They were all really, really good. But I think the first uh, novella, which is called Love, 
uh, was a little bit better than the other ones. Like I liked it a little bit more just because it stuck with me, but all three of them are amazing. Um, they basically are set in a fictionalized Haiti, which is supposed to mirror like the real life Haiti that uh, Vieux Chauvet lived through. And after she um, published these novellas, I think she was exiled, um, or at least like she couldn't stay in Haiti because they were, you know, a lot of um, kind of political critique and protest in here, and that was suppressed um, at the time of its um, of it being published. But yeah, kind of like Milkman, and um, also kind of like Insurrecto, but a little bit different. Any more, most similarly to Milkman, but this is better than Milkman by far though, this is a classic, but um, these all deal with um, predominantly women, but also families living under political authoritarianism, violence, as well as misogyny and patriarchy. But so yeah, there's quite a bit of like violence in here, though it's not always like very overt. It's also kind of like emotional, psychological violence, maybe a bit of manipulation but all that being said there's also like the characters are very humanized particularly the women i think the main uh, protagonist of love again she's very much humanized and she is um like all of the stories but uh, particularly in love like they focus on women and how women navigate their everyday lives their households their relationships with their families while also living in extreme political oppression violence and um there's so many scenes where like characters are just like at least in love um like the characters are like sitting in their house and they can they're looking outside the window and they can see like violence going on but then there's also kind of like this um domestic drama that's going on so they're also concerned with like the other things that are going on in their lives and those kinds of like domestic dramas sometimes mirror what's going on outside um, in Madness, there it's a little bit different, um, but it's kind of about these like former um, poets and writers um, who are now kind of kind of going mad, going insane, and it's written in a little bit of a different uh, format. But um, yeah, um, so as the name suggests, too, like there's kind of the theme of these emotions. In each of these novellas and the the story is kind of like structured around this particular emotion which i think is so cool and i really i'm really interested in affect theory so i was like yes this is so cool but um yeah all the themes aside too i loved um Vio chauvet's writing um again it just really flows really well it's structured really well didn't have any issues with pacing or anything like i was very i was really hooked um, even if like some of the parts are difficult to read um, but yeah just like a lot of like psychological tension um, and it's like very layered dramas going on just amazing just amazing so I got another book by her I think it's called Dance on the Volcano um, I'm gonna be reading that this year um, but yeah I'm really really happy to have discovered her and again I really recommend this to everyone especially because if you want to you can read the novella separately um, and kind of like take your time with them. Um, they're not like the stories, like the plot isn't interconnected. They just kind of take place in the same fictionalized Haiti. Um, but yeah, it was also my introduction to Haitian literature and I want to read a lot more Haitian literature now. Um, but yeah, this was a big favorite this year. I'm so, so happy that I read this and I really want to reread uh, Love now. I'm like, mm, I missed that story, but yeah. I think those are all the books that I want to talk about. I hope this video is not too long. I don't think it is. I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, sorry if I was a little bit rambly. I am out of practice. But I hope that you got some good recommend recommendations from this video. I hope that I was able to convince you to go and pick up some of these books. I think that they're all worth your time. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Um, I... I'm really gonna try to make more videos. Um, I should probably film like some kind of haul because it's so bad, guys. I've bought so many books <laughs> like uh, in the past um, two months or so. I've bought a bunch of um, like Latin American literature <laughs> because I just really want to get into it. Um, but I also have a lot of other books from other countries. Um, yeah, just like a lot going on. I have a lot of reading plans and I just really want to crack on with them. So 
yeah thank you again for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye